much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video. I am super excited to get into today's video because it is a makeup tag and it's a fairly new tag that when I first saw it, I just got so excited because um, it was just a really cool tag, something I hadn't really seen before and that I was excited to participate in. So not to get ahead of myself, this tag was created by L.S. On YouTube and she collaborated with Love Heatherette. I found both of their channels through this tag but uh, basically it is called the Secret Loves tag and it is uh, all about limited edition and discontinued products and it's basically a tag that asks uh, eight questions and just kind of that way you can uh, talk about and share some uh, limited edition and discontinued products that you really love, hate, We'll get into all that, but um, I know on YouTube, and for me personally, I feel like uh, once a product is gone, I can't really talk about it much because it is frustrating for people who then don't have it to hear people all raving about, you know, oh, this wonderful palette when they can't get a hold of it. So this tag I just thought was really fun and unique, uh, and a unique way to kind of bring those uh, limited edition and uh, uh, you know, discontinued products back out of your collection and just kind of remind yourself, oh yes, I really do like this palette, um, you know, here's why. So anyway, I just thought it was such a cool idea and I really wanted to participate in this. So let's dive into the questions and get into it. The first question was, your favorite limited edition or discontinued product that you purchased, own, or tried? Um, and for this one, I knew that my all-time favorite pro uh, product that I purchased are the, let me put them in order, the Lorac Mega Pro Palettes. Um, they came out three years in a row. I purchased all of them and I love all of them. And honestly, it's kind of frustrating to me that they are limited edition because they are, they're really great. And I know with this one especially, I have uh, used it with some friends before and they've both times were like, what is this palette? Because I want to go out and get it, it's so great. And I'm like, it's no longer available. <laughs> so um, Lorac has brought these two back and I'm really hoping they get around to bringing this back because I would be ecstatic and I would text both my friends right away and tell them to like grab it because it, they are really phenomenal palettes and if you've never seen the inside I'm sure you have but um, this is what the first one looks like. This was the first Mega Pro that released. I do not remember the year <laughs> but it was just such a pretty palette and at the time when this came out I already own, I only own the first um, Pro palette, but I love the formula, so I definitely thought that even though this was a more expensive palette for the holidays, I think it was $60, um, it was definitely worth it because you got so many shadows. And then the Mega 2, also very pretty. It's not my favorite, probably due to the blue packaging. I feel like it just kind of takes away from the beautiful colors that are in here, but they, I mean, there are a, a beautiful variety of shades in here. I've got the gold. You got some more warmish, uh, the reddish tones. You got this beautiful penny shade. I mean, it is just so pretty. And their shimmers are so buttery soft. Um, just really lovely to work with. And then last up, the most recent one. And this is the one that they brought back. I can't remember when this came out. I want to say two years ago? Two years ago. I believe it was two years ago. Correct me if I'm wrong. But they just brought it back out. I don't know if it's still available at Ulta, but um, it was a couple weeks ago. But uh, this I enjoy just because of the white packaging. I know a lot of people don't. And yes, it does get dirty, but I feel like every palette, no matter the packaging, gets dirty. Uh, but it's just a beautiful array of colors. And they kind of stuck very um, brown and neutral with it. But they do have, you know, the one pop of color. But I actually really appreciate this palette for that because when I, the past two times I went uh, traveling away from the house on vacation, this is the only palette I brought and I was able to create a really, you know, easy, quick, neutral look. So um, a palette like this is just, that's all I needed for my trips. And so I really, really like it for that reason. And I really do appreciate that about Lorac when they would bring out these for the holidays that I could count on the quality being excellent. All right, question number two, least favorite um, that you purchased, own, or tried. So least favorite limited edition or discontinued product that you have owned or tried. Um, so I don't really... I haven't really purchased a ton of limited edition or discontinued products um, simply because when it come, when limited edition products do come around, I try to really talk myself out of purchasing them just for the fact that once they're gone, I won't really be able to talk about them or use them for 
um, my beauty blog, my Instagram, uh, my Facebook, and now my YouTube. So I don't have a ton, and I don't have um, a ton that uh, I don't like. So the only thing that I could think of that I could say was my least favorite, and with her saying least favorite, I felt a little better about putting this in there because it doesn't mean it's horrible. It's just out of all the limited edition and uh, discontinued products that I own, this is my least favorite. But uh, it is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Nicole Guerrero Glow Kit. Um, this came out relatively recently, earlier this year, I believe, um, and I bought it mainly for the fact that I was wanting to get one of the glow kits from Anastasia, but the one that I was interested in was sold out. Like, every time I tried to go and buy it, I would go look on our website, it was sold out. So, and that, around that time that I was wanting to purchase one, they announced this uh, collaboration that they were coming out, and the shadows that I saw online, they looked really nice. They kind of looked like shades that I would enjoy um, for a highlight, and I'm not a crazy highlight person. Um, I kind of have to be in the mood for it, and I tend to only do highlight if I know I'm going to be doing um, an Instagram tutorial, um, YouTube, and stuff like that, because I feel like on camera is when you can really appreciate the highlight and like it's most beneficial whereas in everyday life um, I get oily enough throughout the day I feel like I have my own natural highlight so I have to be in the mood and even when I'm in the mood it's a very light dusting I don't like anything too I don't like the streaks that's not me <laughs> but anyway so I'm not a huge highlight person take that into consideration but um, when I purchased this, um, I just, and people were saying it too, that were reviewing it and who really enjoy highlights, so it made me feel a little bit better, but I feel like they're very glittery. Like when I go in and use this, I have to make sure I knock my brush off pretty well before I go in on my cheek, because if not, I just feel like there's glitter and not like that pretty shimmer shine from a highlight that I want. So it is a Rudy palette, it just has, a, it's more chunkier, glitterier than I expected. I did hear um, some people who reviewed this and own other of her glow kits say that like her little four pan um, palettes, glow kits, um, aren't quite as chunky with the, the glitter aspect and it's more of that sheen. So I do still wanna try another one of her glow kits, but this for me is just, I don't know. I'm just, I, I'm so, so on it. I, I'm still keeping it just because I don't have very many highlights in my collection. But out of all the limited edition products that I own, this is my least favorite. Okay, question number three. Uh, was there a collection that got away? And not really a collection, but there was definitely a limited edition product item that got away from me. And it would be the Kat Von D uh, Mia Vita Loca palette. I will put a picture over here. I'm sure you know what this palette is and you know what it looks like. I feel like I've heard this in a couple of the tags. Uh, people mention this palette because it is, it's a beautiful palette and I feel like it was really difficult to get into or to get a hold of when it was available. And when it came out, I forget the year it came out, but I had never tried any Kat Von D um, products or like eyeshadows, I should say. I'd tried one of her concealers before. But so I don't, I didn't have much experience with the brand, but I did know that I wanted to try her products. But with that being such a large palette, that being such a bright, vibrant palette and um, being so expensive at the time, I was like, no, I'm fine. I don't need it. Looking back now, I regret it. I really do. Um, it had so many shades, so many matte shades, which you guys know I am a matte eyeshadow lover, um, but it had so many unique shades that I really don't have in my collection that it would have been fantastic to have that to refer to whenever I did get creative and wanted some color in my eyeshadows. All right, question number four, what item or collection do you wish was permanent? This came out last year and it was part of their LA Lights palette. It's the blush, a uh, contour blush and highlight palette. And this I think sold out fairly quickly um, uh, compared to like the other products in their lights, uh, LA Lights collection that they did. But um, it's a really pretty palette. And I actually find myself, um, for a while, I was finding myself using this a lot. And I actually kind of had to stop because once I got into filming tutorials for Instagram, um, I didn't want to be showing this because you can't purchase it anymore. But um, the quality of these are really, really nice. Um, all the blushes are shades that I feel like most anyone would wear. Even this bright one is still really wearable. These three are like the highlights of it, but even this, um, I know a lot of people would probably enjoy that as a blush, especially if you're a fair complexion. And it definitely makes me want to try their other blushes. I know they have 
palettes. I don't think they have any singles, but I know they have like three pan palettes with their blushes. Um, and it makes me want to try them to see if they are the same quality. And that way I can recommend those palettes because I, I can't recommend this. All right, question number five. What do you think about items that were labeled limited edition but then come back? And this is funny because I was actually watching Liv Loves Her Makeup. Uh, on the day I'm filming this, she has just posted a kind of rant video about uh, companies labeling something limited edition and then bringing it back or just keeping it around. So I have that fresh in my mind. Um, but I'm kind of 50-50 on this. And so um, I'll kind of explain why. So depends on how quick it all happens. So like, in, for example, Laura Pro came out with these, and I'll agree with her, with her, Liv loves her makeup, that I do wish they would just bring these out as permanent because they are so good. But um, they came out with these during the holidays, um, one each year, came out with, with this one, and then the blue one, and then the white one. And um, after they brought out all these, I forget what they brought out the next year, but then um, I want to say like six months ago or something, they brought the, the blue one out for a limited time to, uh, I think on just HSN or something, um, so you could get your hands on it again. And that way people who missed out on this were able to get it. I don't know how long, I didn't keep track, but I don't know how long it was available. But I did think that was pretty cool because it had been at least two years since this came out. So people who skipped out on it or you know couldn't afford it at the time did have a second chance to get their hands on it. And same story with this one. This is less of a time span between it because this um, is the most recent release, but it's available to buy again on Ulta. And so I think that's kind of nice. I'm waiting for them to come out with this one again because I really want to recommend it. I uh, recommend that some of my friends get it because they have said that they want this palette, but I haven't seen any kind of chatter about this one coming back. So I'm okay with those, but the thing that does bug me is when brands come out and saying limited, they're about to release this product and it's very limited edition, limited quantities. And then on release date, it's like gone in five minutes and then a couple days later, sometimes not even a couple days later, sometimes like that day, it's like, don't worry, we're going to do a restock since it's so much in demand. It's like, mm. and especially since Marlena from Makeup Geek kind of, you know, shared some insider knowledge because she has a makeup brand and she knows that it takes a minimum of six weeks for you to be able to uh, get the product, like make more and buy more of the product and get it to you, a minimum of six weeks. Someone I think even said like 10 or 12 weeks, depending on how like rare the product is. So when companies do that, it's like, you know, you're, you know that they had it all along. They just kept it limited. That way they kind of hype it up and give people anxiety going through checkout. I don't know. I just, I don't appreciate that, especially since I've been a part of a couple of those. It's just, it's not fun. I don't know. I just, I see makeup as something very fun and um, it shouldn't be so cutthroat and stressful. So um, I really don't appreciate those. When those, when those announcements of restocks come out, I'm just like, really? I just feel like very played. And so I don't tend to enjoy buying or just look, you know, looking into buying from that company because of that. So those those type of uh, restocks do bug me, but um, I don't know. Like I said, I'm 50-50 depending on depending on the way they bring it out. Um, another thing, Liv loves her makeup. I'll leave her channel link down below since I'm mentioning her so much. But um, she also mentioned how they Tarte does a lot of like limited edition, and then you can buy it for like months on end. I think she mentioned a palette that's been on the website for like a year. That's kind of ridiculous too, um, <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of my scattered thoughts on what I think about limited edition products that are brought back. Okay, question number six, what do you think about brands reusing shades? Um, this one, I don't know, I, I don't really have a whole lot of like concrete thoughts on it. I don't mind it, um, especially when holiday, um, like holiday collections come out, because for me, like holiday collections, I kind of like to buy them for family members so if the company reuses like a really beloved shade of theirs in their line in that palette then it's like oh great like I can buy that palette and I know that shade is um you know I, I like that shade and I think this family member will really like it I don't know if it, if it doesn't happen too much um I don't mind it I think if they reused it over and over and if I loved a brand enough to own a lot from them I would find that annoying just because then it's like well half that palette or half that whatever I already own but um I don't know that's what I think 
Question number seven, what do you think about holiday collections? Um, I, I like them and some aspects I really find annoying, but I like them. I think it's really fun looking forward to the holiday season to see what brands come up with. Um, I don't know. I just find it fun to see what kind of like really cutesy or really neat or special thing that they can release for the holidays and then either buying it for myself to have in my collection because I like to have pretty palettes in my collection or, you know, buying that for family members and just it, liking that they're a little extra than what's in the normal line. Now the part that I don't like so much is that there are brands where I can no longer depend on the quality to purchase them. Um, and I'm sure I don't have to say, but the two biggest ones that fall are Too Faced and Tarte. When they come out with their holiday collections, it's like they go all out for the holiday collections except in quality. So after one or two years of buying them, I just, when they come out, I enjoy looking at them. I think they're really pretty and I kind of like, like the packaging, but I just, I'm not going to get it because I know I won't use it because I know the quality is not there. But there are brands like Kat Von D and Lorac that when they release a holiday collection, um, I do look into and I do check it out to see if I want to purchase it because I know the quality um, is usually there. So I do look hard at their holiday collections because I am excited to see what they come out with and it is fun to have something special in your collection. Uh, number eight, what would be your dream limited edition collection? And this is the last question in her tag. Um, this one I had to think long and hard about because I'm not a very creative thinker when it comes to stuff like this. Uh, I would never own a makeup brand because I just I just don't think in these kind of creative terms. But I was thinking about it and like thinking about all the kind of collections that brands have come out with and like what I would like be through the roof if they came out with. And I figured I would love to see like a Narnia collection. Um, I really enjoy the Narnia movies, uh, the Narnia series, and I think it would be really cool if they released a little collection that was kind of all around the theme of Narnia. And I was trying to think of what exactly I would want to see in the collection. And I know the first thing, which is the easiest for me because I love eyeshadow palettes, but the first thing I would think would be so cool to see would be an eyeshadow palette like de um, packaged like a wardrobe and kind of open up in the middle to show the eyeshadows. I think that would be really cool just because the wardrobe is, you know, such a classic, iconic figure for the Narnia series. Uh, that is all the questions that she has for her tag, but I did want to include one more just because I feel like it's fitting for this tag. Um, and I put what is your the best limited edition packaging because like all these palettes, you know, talking about your favorites and stuff, I kind of chose my favorites out of quality and the one I use the most, which are these Lorac Mega Pros, but there are some limited edition palettes that come out and I just like drool over the, um, just the, the packaging, how pretty it is. And this guy almost made it to that list. This is also really, really cool. I love flipping it back and forth all day long. <laughs> but I just want to mention two palettes real quick, kind of add on at the end of this tag. Um, that are my favorite or that I think are the prettiest packaging and the first one of course is my Pirates of the Caribbean and Lorac Cosmetics collaboration. You guys know when this came out I did a whole big review and just drooled over it but it is in the shape of the compass like Jack Sparrow's compass and um, you open it up and it has, a, it has a little compartment for a liner or brush but the best part of this is that at the side of it is where you can hide the cheek palette and it just is this little compartment that you can just slide it right back in, fits it perfectly and I don't know, I just love that aspect of it. And then the next one I did want to mention real quick is the Urban Decay Vice 4. I want to say this is the Vice 4 palette, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's the Vice 4. But it's just, it's so cool and so pretty with all those changing colors like an oil spill. The inside is also really nice. Um, I don't reach for this palette very much just because when I do tend to go for this palette I have to kind of bring in other colors because um, they really only have this shade and this shade that I would use like as transition and deepening up the crease. But they really do have a lot of pretty colors and I like having it in my collection because it has these unique shades that I really don't have in my collection outside of this so I keep it around for that reason but also for the packaging because every time I think about decluttering this guy I'm just like 
Now, we're keeping you so we can do this. But anyway, I think they did a really cool job with the packaging. If you own this or if you saw it, like this, the the part of it that does the color shifting is raised out from the rest of it. it almost looks like a spider web. But uh, it's just, it's very cool. It's very neat. So those are all the questions in the tag and my little bonus question that I had to throw in there. I had so much fun kind of thinking through the questions and coming up with my answers for this tag. Um, I am going to tag a couple girls down below to do this tag. I think it's a lot of fun. But if you see this, if you have a channel and want to do it, go for it. Please consider yourself tagged. And even if you don't have a channel or a blog or anything like that, leave your answers down below. I'd love to hear what y'all think what you would consider as your favorite and least favorite and also I would love to hear your thoughts on limited edition collections that restock two weeks later or that come back a year or two later like the Rock. like do you consider that okay does that annoy you I'd love to hear your thoughts down below but with all that said I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this movie thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed seeing what my picks were for this makeup tag and I will see you all very soon in my next video Oh, 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 oh,